It's time for Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Forget the world. How is the church to figure out what we do with sinful ancestors? This is Wretched Radio. The world a seeming dis- intent on tearing down anybody's image, anybody's memory, anybody's contributions, if they have any sort of racist skeleton in their closet. Forget the world. What about the church? We hear what's happening out there, and we do well to figure out how we deal with this issue in here. What do you do when you discover, for instance, George Whitfield? He actually worked to promote legalized slavery in the state of Georgia. That's right. The man who actually built a school so that black people, slaves, could be educated was still working (laughs) to ensure their enslavement. Now, what do we do with him? Who of us has not read some Whitfield or at least read about Whitfield and gone, wow, a great revival took place in part because of this man's preaching. Works, works, I'd rather climb to heaven on a rope of sand. Can't say that anymore. If we listen to the world, Maybe we should. Maybe we shouldn't. How do we deal with Whitfields and Edwards? How do you deal with Luther? How do you deal with Calvin? All men who, shock, committed sins. How do we go about the business of determining whether or not we quote them, esteem them, suggest their books, preach about them in sermons? We don't listen to the world, we listen to the Bible. So let's start there, shall we? Does the Bible tell us that we are to esteem people? The answer is yes. Does the Bible say that we are supposed to emulate people? Uh, Actually, Paul said that about himself. Now that's fascinating because Paul, he had a bit of a sordid history. You could say that he was racist in that his Jewish pedigree condescended to these scandalous Christians. Furthermore, he went out about the business of murdering them. Did he throw a rock himself? Bible doesn't say so, but he held the coats of those who did. Whoa. And yet we're told to think highly of the apostle Paul and to live the way that he did with that sort of past. So lesson number one, the Bible says, yeah, we can esteem different people. We can honor those people. There is a hall of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 is another chapter that helps us to figure out what do we do with remembering saints from the past? Like Abraham, who basically sold out his wife, not once, but twice. And yet, Abraham, what about Moses? The murderer. The, the one who was frequently mm, rather cowardly. And yet, what about Rahab the prostitute? What? She's in the hall of faith. The Bible somehow has this figured out. Whereas it appears our culture perhaps doesn't. The Bible says that there are people who have lived that we can look back and emulate. And that we can talk about and learn from. Does that mean we elevate them to some false sainthood? No. Does that mean we should build a statue to them? No. But that doesn't mean that we should tear down their memory and everything that they contributed. So how now do we figure it out? And I think we need to recognize it's not always easy. We don't emulate Judas Iscariot. And yet, he served Jesus for three years. Okay, he was taken from the money bag. But the point is... He was still schlepping around under difficult circumstances. Anybody would look at that pack of 12 and go, what a dedicated group. I'm sure Judas did some good things, and yet we do not emulate him. When was the last time, even in homeschool circles with a family that has 14 other kids that have a name that begins with the letter J said, and this is Judas. We ran out of J's and, well, I've got to tell you something. It was, a, it was a relief to little Jehoshaphat because he was the one getting teased. Now, Judas has taken that burden from him. You don't hear that. Why? Why don't you have kids named Jeroboam? 
I'm sure he did some good things for the northern tribes. Now, the Bible doesn't give us those sort of clear-cut distinctions that are needed. And I don't think that's a deficiency of the Bible. I think that's the brilliance of the Bible. Because if I were going to write a holy book, I would basically say this. You can emulate somebody if they do this, they haven't done that. And I would come up with how many of this and that they could have done or not done. That's what I would do. Bible doesn't do that. The Bible includes a list of characters in the hall of faith that you go, I, I, it's just, huh, wow. Because they had faith in Jesus Christ. And the Bible recognizes that even Christians sin. We don't emulate, I, I think, unbelievers in the church, which is why, honestly, I, I don't think that, that they have any place being quoted unless it is to simply do what Paul did by saying, you know, you've got yourself a poet, although we, we didn't hear exactly who it was. You've got a poet, you Cretans. You act like this, and I agree with that. But there was never an idolizing of somebody who was not a believer and somebody who did indeed do wicked things. We don't do that. But you can emulate the good parts about a believer. Even if somebody was weak and feeble, you could still point and go, but look at that. Look at that, because we have a recognition that we are not going to find a perfect person to emulate. And it appears that is now the standard of the world. If they've got any sin in their closet, well, they cannot have any sort of memory that is positive. And by the way, that's kind of coming home to roost a little bit for the world. Don't know if you caught this delicious headline. Planned Parenthood steeped in white supremacy. Employees and supporters charge. Yes, it appears that somebody remembered the history of Margaret Sanger, who wanted to promote the Negro Project to get rid of those useless weeds. Now, a letter signed by more than 350 current and former staffers of Planned Parenthood of Greater New York, as well as 800 donors, supporters, and volunteers, declared that Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, was a racist white woman and that the organization suffers from institutional racism. So I guess we're going to close down Planned Parenthood, huh? <laughs> Speaking of racist people in history, I guess we're not going to be teaching evolution in the schools anymore because Charles Darwin was absolutely positively racist. Comparing black people to horses on a farm that can be put down once they're Utility has been expanded, ex, ex, burned up. What is the word I'm looking for? Expended. Ex, that's the one right there. Are we going to get rid of Charles Darwin because he too was racist? Well, if we're going to play by their rules, they should. It's going to be fascinating to see how they kind of navigate through those waters because if they're being consistent, Planned Parenthood should be out of business and evolution should never be taught because Charles Darwin... He did nothing good. Margaret Sanger did nothing good. Now, I actually agree with that. But from their perspective, they would say, oh, they did wonderful things. But they've got that. So we'll see how consistent they are. I suspect they won't be. Nevertheless, we Christians need to figure this out too. How do we go about the business of determining who gets recognized and not? Al Mohler writing about this difficulty on Southern Seminary. Why? Because the founders were slaveholders whose names are on the sides of buildings. Their names are not on these buildings because they were slave owners or for slavery, but because of the dedication of their lives and the inculcation of their theology into the lifeblood of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. So he's saying, yep, they were, but that isn't all they were. There, there was more to them than that. Basil Manley wrote our Confession of Faith. James Pettigrew, he channeled his family's wealth into the survival of this institution. His library became the core of the library. John Brodus was the most famous American preacher of his day, both in the South and the North, writing an influential textbook on the preaching, uh, preaching in the English language. So Al Mohler is saying, yeah, yep, you're right, they were, but... They did other things too. Now, could these men have been involved in something 
that would indeed cause Al Mohler and the Southern Seminary to argue otherwise. Could, could they have been? I, I think so. Is slavery one of those issues? I think it's worthy of debate, most certainly. But as we do that, let us start with where the Bible starts. We do need to recognize. We, we do want to be men and women after God's heart like David, who committed adultery and had a man murdered. We can look back at some people and recognize they contributed good things, and we can emulate those things while being honest about those other things and applying that thing. Oh, I'm trying to uh, forget expended. Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Oh, yeah, grace, something the world cannot offer. This is Wretched Radio. Bailiff. Please have the witness put the right hand on the Bible and administer the oath. Oh, the Bible, which actually says our yea should be yea and our nay should be nay. Does the defense have any more witnesses? Yeah, two of them <laughs> in Revelation 11.